the best. Not Travis. And we are late to the party, and it's another edition of Better, better late, late Than, than never. never. Or Better Late Than Never. The LTN, yeah, that makes me hungry. It does. But, it's Travis, we are going through remakes, and we just did Dirty Rotten Scoundrels last week, and now this week you are bringing us another remake that is releasing this year, That correct? is releasing in 2019. Okay. Correct. So all of these movies we're doing through this theme are being released this, this year. Sure. So this next one is produced by Disney. Sure. And has a remake of the same name. Okay. Directed by Guy Ritchie. Okay. And sets release May 24th of 2019. Aladdin. Yes. <laughs> well, are you sure? Yes. Because the original was released November 25th of 1992. Yes, Aladdin. Okay. <laughs> Had a budget of $28 million. Uh, made a box office hit of uh, $504.1 million. Directed by Ron Clements and John Musker. Uh, so this film is the 31st Disney animated feature film and was the fourth produced during the Disney film era known as the, the Disney Renaissance. Of course. When Eisner got time. it right. The good times. <laughs> so this particular movie is based on an uh, Ar Arabic folk tale. Sure. Uh, the music score was written by Alan Minkin and features six songs and lyrics written by both Howard Ashman and Tim Rice. And we've yeah. been so lucky to preview some of these songs sung. By the man himself. <laughs> Upon release, though, uh, this became the first animated feature to reach a half a billion dollar mark. Sure. And was the highest grossing animated film of all time until it was surpassed by... Lion King. The Lion King. Did you say Arabic? <laughs> Anyways, go <come> on. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. <laughs> keep, keep going. So this movie garnered uh, two Academy Awards. The first and only number from a Disney feature to earn a Grammy Award for a song of the year. Good job, Alan Minkin! So, uh, it also spawned two sequels, a Broadway musical and a television show. Sure. Stars Steve from Full House, or Scott Winger. Scott Winger. Robin Williams, and a lot more. Of course. So. <laughs> uh, you don't need to know. We don't, uh, I mean, come on. Gilbert Godfrey, come on. <laughs> I know. Sure. Let's watch this trailer to this 1992 classic. Aladdin. Man, this takes me back. This is Three not years ago. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I screwed up. <laughs> clever. It's clever. Last year, we took you to a place where okay. a My girl looked into the heart of a beast and found the man of her dreams. Beast. Yeah, I don't remember now, the trailer starting that way. And enter a whole new world beyond First your imagination. First animated movie should be... Where a boy discovers a magic lamp. Get it. A best uh, okay. best uh, okay. picture nomination. There we go. Not this one. Beat and Beast. What? What? Yeah. Such, Such a crick in the neck! neck. <laughs> Whoa! So what'll it be, Master? I must have hit my head harder than I thought. Walt Disney Pictures presents Aladdin. You're a genie? That's right! He can be taught! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine a whole new world of excitement. A whole new world. Ah, I see what you did there. Ah. Danger. Hardest level in freaking yeah. Oh my god, I was gonna say the same that. thing. <laughs> it's the story of a poor boy from the streets and a beautiful girl from a palace. Princess Jasmine. They Ooh, were two very I love a boo. people. The law says you must be the prince. Brought together by one incredible wish. What is it you want most? There's this girl. <sighs> beautiful. Say and that smile. Uh, <laughs> she's the princess. Do <laughs> you even have a chance at to be? Say the magic words. Genie, I wish for you to make me a prince. Y'all see my palace? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing musical members. Conflict. And he'll stop it. His voice. Mm. It's time to say goodbye. To principal. I'm not gonna lie, I really liked her red outfit that she wore during that time too. I was like, oh, okay. god, get it, girl. You're like six. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jasmine, talk to her. No. Only to discover. I was actually more like a uh, take off your clothes moment during there. You hear about that? Me. Yeah. How did they get around so fast? The Academy Award winning composer of The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. It looked like uh, Pegasus. He's wearing goofy hats. Coming this holiday season, Walt Disney Pictures, Aladdin. Yeah. Aladdin. I love 
Aladdin. I, like, I didn't remember that that's how they did the promo, was dangling, dangling all the other successes, successes that they've done in front of it. Uh, but it, yeah, it completely makes sense because they were kind of killing it at that moment, like you said, right. the Disney Renaissance. So to show you where we were with The Little Mermaid, where we went with Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. Beast, and then of course Aladdin. What did you guys see it based upon this trailer? Absolutely. I did. <laughs> Definitely too. did. Multiple times in theaters because it was amazing. I think we even saw it once at the drive-in. So, at the drive-in. Drive it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, I love Aladdin. I think I kind of take all, even though Being and the Beast is probably like my top favorite of that era time. Um, I didn't think it was an I, error. I, I think it was. It was <laughs> Travis's <time>. era. <laughs> He's like, Again. finally! <laughs> um, but then, uh, you know, I kind of put it all together with Little Mermaid, you have Aladdin, then you got Lion King, like, I all, I loved them all, you know, I watched them all together. Sure. Like, I couldn't go without watching Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, without, like, What about you know, Pocahontas or Hunchback Pocahontas of Notre Dame? Pocahontas and Hunchback, <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame was in there, too. R.I.P. Notre Dame. You also got, mm -hmm. yes. Crazy. You also get uh, uh, Hercules as well in there. I mean, that's kind of towards the end right. of the, that time, but it, they're still in there, and I absolutely love Aladdin, especially all the musics. I will say that I love uh, Aladdin and the Prince of Thieves. That was the third movie that came out straight to DVD or straight to VHS at the time. And The Return of Robin Williams? So Yes. Touching on this subject of Mr. Rob Williams, who we all love and, and just love him as a genie, and it's I think what stands, makes this movie stand out is him alone. Sure. Um, when he did this film, his asking fee for movies was $8 million. Uh, do you know how much Rob Williams did this movie for? Taking a guess? Without Free? Nothing? $75,000, which is the bottom scale in for SAG at the time. Really? So, yeah. Did and he... he did it based on the condition that his name or image not be used for marketing. Oh, and uh, his supporting characters don't take more than 25% of the space on the end. He doesn't want to be the headline. Sure, he didn't want to be the reason why everybody uh, went and saw it. And there was a huge well. reason why for him, too, because he had a movie coming out called Toys. Right. That was coming around the same time, and because he was the face in that movie and not the voice, he wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So guess what? Disney said, mm, Nope. No, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. Just But on kidding. the back end, did it all backwards. This is why... It, uh, Williams actually broke away from Disney. He was very upset with them. Went against what he went, his wishes. This is why he didn't do uh, the second the Aladdin second movie. One, right. And then he came back for Prince of Thieves, which I, I new, love. But new president of uh, productions came ahead and uh, kind of mended his things with Robin Williams. One of his first projects. And they said, yes, we will kind of do that. Because Robin Williams' kids were also asking... Why dad, why dad, why weren't you in the movie? Yeah, well, he also wants a paycheck, so I understand why Robin Williams came back, too. Right. Uh, especially for a character that he's really good at, and it's obviously caused a lot of conflict in terms of being able to recast Robin Williams' character, the genie, for the upcoming Aladdin, and it's understandable because he did such an amazing job. No matter who was going to take Hard it over, it was going to be feel. tough. Right. And Absolutely. it was because it was just that manic, comedic timing and brilliance of improv that Robin Williams was oh. able to create this genie, and it translated so well to the film. And I think also, too, just like you said, just his that imp he was so good at improv and just yeah. kind of coming with well, stuff up the spot especially when he does the merchant yeah at the beginning and i remember when they were talking about how they just laid a bunch of stuff on like a table oh. and then they recorded it and he was just picking stuff up and then they picked certain good things about that speaking right. of that too so. did you know that in the original release of aladdin there's this, his opening song where he's singing about going through the desert mm -hmm. here's a part where he sings about Cutting, if they don't like the way your face, they'll cut off your hands or mm -hmm. ears or something like that. Uh, but they realized they offended some folks of certain regions, so they kind of re-edited that for all future releases to where uh, he's in something completely different. Understandable, because, I mean, it's truth. And they even leave that part in the movie, too, when uh, they think Jasmine stole and they're about to ch yeah. chop off her hands for sealing. So it ain't wrong. I mean, it's accurate, but I understand not going full-on... Um, realistic when it comes to certain regions in these movies but either way they did translate it very well in terms of uh, giving us that that region you know it, it was cool like i had never seen anything like that before yeah. as a kid um because i think i was what was in 92 so i was yeah, like 92. nine years old uh and for me you know i haven't really been other than prince of persia on like nintendo back in the day i never really got that that 
genre or that that universe uh, until it was Aladdin. Aladdin. So yeah. they did a good job. <sighs> a couple years ago, we I don't know if you guys remember, we had the privilege of going to a special screening for yeah. Aladdin, yeah. Um, where they had one of the artists there who had some pictures signed and stuff like that, and reproductions given out to us. And then he was telling us that story, like you were saying, right? How many hours and hours of of video they have around with Robin Williams just going through. Improv. It, another one that took from me too, so you know the scene when he's doing the never had a friend like me and then there's the applause sign and it, it was basically he was talking about how like that was a joke because they um, they showed that scene to like executives and stuff and then they they didn't like they wanted them to oh, applaud God. but they didn't <laughs> applaud so they put that in there as a joke and then when we watched because he did it before the movie was airing so when we watched it and that came up everyone was, was all so clapping <laughs> it was, it was, it was an experience especially because we had seen Aladdin so many times and to watch it with a crowd that was devoted it was a D23 crowd uh, but not at D23 it oh. was one of their events outside of it uh, but yeah yeah, getting that enjoyment um, was definitely something that certain ones can carry on forward into these new movies and it's why we we're capable of enjoying the new movies or at least not shunning them before they come out. It's because we want to re-experience them again with a twist and that's why I'm open to Aladdin. That's why the next Aladdin. I'm open to Will Smith being the mm -hmm. genie because I want to see how somebody else is going to portray. Y'all see my palace? <laughs> I love it. Like it gets me. That every was time. a good part. Right, but you're you're seeing it as him not being Robin Williams. Right, right. right. And it's the only way. And that's the only way you can do it. So. Scott Weiner is Aladdin himself. Amazing job, especially because Steve was so much fun on, on Full House. I love that they there. integrated it into sort of the story when they go to Disney World and yeah. you have DJ, like, uh -huh. and they had Aladdin come in. It was around the time Aladdin <laughs> came out. Yeah. She's like, Steve? He was dressed up like Steve. <laughs> With a smile and everything. Yeah. It's so perfect. Uh, and I love that he even voiced the character in the TV show, too. Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, I, I did watch the I, I watched the Aladdin TV show as well, and I remember one episode where with the crossover with Hercules that was awesome. No, not that one, but oh. the one where they have to go and uh, help another prince in another like uh, city who has like these powers. Like if he's angry or mad, I saw that one. It's a little kid. Yeah, with the yeah, little I kid, that and one. it's angry and mad, uh -huh. and then it like it, everything starts to destroy. And then he thinks he's married to Jasmine or something. Yeah, and they gotta and break gets, it to him, but they're not. He's uh, sad and everything, <laughs> but then they finally like figure it out towards the end. It's so. like the only episode I remember from Aladdin, so that's funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it translates to other mediums too. You had Broadway with Aladdin right. and their stage show at California so Adventure. Good. Amazing Lasted for a long time. I'm, Absolutely. I mean, I like Frozen, but I'm really sad that they to take out Aladdin from the show from California Adventure to put Frozen in. I think that uh, we got too much Frozen, and I wish that if it wasn't Aladdin, it was like another mo show that we like from that era of time. So whether it be like The Little Mermaid, sure, or even Hercules, I feel like that would be kind of a cool uh, but show. But you say too. that only because you grew up with Aladdin. What are those kids who've grown up with Frozen and not Aladdin? Yeah, Listen, I Frozen guess. is going to possibly reach a whole new level in terms of my curiosity coming up, especially with how That's they approach one. 2, yeah. to where like I actually am excited for Frozen 2. But you're right, that Aladdin show was so well done. If you never got to experience the Aladdin show at California Adventure, find it on YouTube. People have posted the entire show beginning yeah. to end. Worth it. Like, I'd go back and just watch him to and, watch him. I mean, whoever played the genie, of course. Or like, I'm, I'm sure there's multiple people who right. played the genie, but who the the people who played the genie during the during that uh, play was just amazing, spot so on. good, especially during that. You never had a friend like me when right. he's doing good. It's and of great. course, the game is so much fun. We're talking about oh playing game, it in Nintendo so. or Super Nintendo I and Sega. <laughs> um, I, I beat every single one of them. No. My thing I was those get past Disney the lava. games. I couldn't I get like, past no, the lava. I always, always got past it without even using a Game Genie. But yeah, I love Aladdin. Uh, I even ended up getting Aladdin on Game Gear when I had my Game Gear, so I had two different versions of it. <laughs> but yeah, Aladdin definitely was uh, the cream of the crop at the time. They were hitting it uh, out to the freaking bleachers every time Disney released one of these animated films, and Aladdin was just another one. And like you said, they're all kind of partnered together, and if you ask 
ask me which one came first because I suck at release dates, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you which one came first because they are all synonymous gotcha. together. Little Mermaid. Then you got Being the Beast. Then you got Aladdin. Oh, is that what the trailer got, showed us? You got uh, Pocahontas and the, or Lion. King. It's either Lion King or Pocahontas, but Pocahontas. Came, they came out in the same year, basically. She's gonna keep going. So thank you guys <laughs> for watching. And then Hunchback our reaction Man. to Aladdin's trailer. What did you guys think of it? Let us know down in the comments below. What's your favorite song from Aladdin? Tell us down there. You can also like and subscribe. And did the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Stardust. All the social networking. Jin joins. You got the you Goofy Movie in there somewhere. Too. You know where they are. Kicking the party, fuel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Get us where we need to go. I love the Goofy Movie. We got to do okay. that one too. It's Lady Tower of Cheesa. Uh, but yeah, talk guys, to me, talk to we are going today. to be at Phoenix Fan Fest in just a few, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix <laughs> Fan Fusion in just a few weeks in Phoenix on May 23rd through the 26th. Be on the lookout for us. We will be there. Tons of people coming. Jeff Goldblum's going to be there. We're going to have Paul Rubin. So many different actors that yeah. we admire are going to be there. So be on the lookout for us as well. Being on the lookout for them when we're there. Thank you, Travis. Thank you all. And what did you think about Aladdin? I want to know because there's a lot more versions of this. So uh, thanks. Yeah, tell us down below. Thank you so much. And as always, now it's time to say goodbye. Party is over. Bye. Bye.